Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we are back again together. All right, and uh, I'm still continuing uh, on that Mpumalanga paper uh, from the prelims, and I hope that so far it's been really, really helpful, you know, in uh, assisting you to, to, you know, prepare towards your final exams. All right, so please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please be part of the family. Please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And yeah, you can always also hit the notification bell so that you know every time we are posting a new lesson, okay? Or even as we continue with the revision. And uh, by the way, uh, I'll be continuing uh, doing this so that I help you towards the exams. All right, um, for those of you who need further assistance, okay, as you have been doing, please just make sure that uh, you send us an email if you need help with either mathematics or physical science, okay, uh, do so, all right, by sending an email, okay, uh, and our email it, uh, address is info at mlungesingosi.co.za. All right, so uh, quickly let's have a look at this question, question 10. They say in the circuit below, so we're given a circuit there, uh, the battery has an EMF of 45 volts and an internal resistance of 2.5 ohms. Okay, so we are given EMF, we are given internal resistance. Okay, they say the resistance of the connecting wires can be ignored, right? So now they've connected in the way that they've connected. We'll talk about that in a little while. They say four resistors are connected as shown. The 10 ohm resistor is placed in a beaker filled with water in order to uh, heat the water okay so i don't know it must be some filament or whatever it is there uh, to try and heat up the water they say to you calculate the total external resistance of the circuit now that's the part i wanted to talk about remember that excludes the em i mean the, the internal resistance right now how are these resistors connected if you think about it the total current will flow out of the battery all right so in this case when we get to this node what happens some of the current goes there and some continues over there and the same current that passes there passes there so what does that tell me about uh, those resistors those two must be in series now if you're confused about what i'm doing it means you haven't watched our uh, you uh, are very easy to follow playlist on uh, Ohm's law. Please just make sure and go and check that uh, uh, playlist on Ohm's law and watch the step-by-step -step, uh, process on how to do circuits, right? Right, so in this case, it tells me I've got a current that moves here. Okay, so some of the current would have moved there and some of the current would move through resistor 2 ohm. But the same current that moves across 2 would also move across 10. So that tells me these two resistors must be in series with each other, right? So they make an equivalent of 12 together. So essentially, I'm going to have two resistors in parallel, which would be the 2 ohm, uh, uh, sorry, the 6 ohm, okay? And the 6 ohm resistor would be in parallel with another resistor, which is uh, the combination of the two, which is 12 ohms, okay? Right, because I've added these two together. And remember, once I put that uh, resistor, uh, once I put them together, right, the combination or the effective resistance in parallel would now be in series with that four ohm resistor. So now, the first thing that I want us to do, let's find the effective parallel resistance. So we're going to say, yeah, 1 over R parallel. This is going to be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Okay. Uh, this is going to be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Okay. So it means that 1 over R parallel would be equal to 1 over uh, 4. Right. So I get a value of 1 over 4. So in this case, uh, remember, all you need to do is just invert. Remember, we're not looking for 1 over R parallel. We're looking for R parallel. So R parallel. So if I invert on this side, I also invert on that side, which is going to be equal to 
for ohms okay otherwise you could have just calculated it by saying r parallel if you've got two resistors in parallel you just simply say the product over sum so it's going to be r1 times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 uh, the reason I love this because we don't have to go through this process of having to, um, you know, take the inverse at the end. Uh, you just go straight to the answer. So you'd have 6 times 12 divided by 6 plus 12. Okay. And in this case, you would believe you me, you would get the same answer, which is 4 ohms. Okay. Right. And then the second one, uh, uh, rather, we're not done. So what we've done now is we've taken these resistors, we've made them into one resistor, okay? And what is that one resistor? That one resistor should be 4 ohms, okay? So that would be 4 ohms. But remember that 4 ohm resistor is now in series. So remember, it would be the total current that pass across that 4 ohm. So it would be in series with that other 4 ohm resistor. So what would be now my effective resistance? It means that R external would be 4 plus 4. Right, I add those two together because they are now in series and it would be 8 ohms. All right, I hope that's clear. Okay, straight to the point. Now, uh, the next question, um, they say to us, calculate the current through the battery. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, now we know the resistance would be 8 ohms. So we want the current through the battery. We're going to now calculate. So we this was 10.1.2, uh, 0.1 rather, um, right? So we want the current. So now uh, I am going to use the equation 10.1.2 E is equals to I into R plus small r. Remember, we said when you use this formula, which current do you use here? It must be the total current, right? So, and by the way, they wanted the current through the battery, which is the total current. Okay, the total current passes through there. And which resistor are you going, resistance are you going to use here? It's going to be the effective resistance or the external resistance of the circuit. And that would be the internal. Of course, E is the EMF. So we know the EMF is 45. We want the current. Okay. We just found the external resistance to be 8. And we said the internal resistance should be 2.5. Okay. Right. So just some mathematical gymnastics. 8 plus 2.5 would be 10.5. Okay. So I would divide both sides by... 8 plus 2.5, okay? What I do on the right, I also will do on the left-hand side. So this would be 8 uh, plus 2.5, sorry. Uh, so this would be 8 plus 2.5, okay? And as a result, this would cancel that. So what do we get for 45 divided by 10.5? And I get a value of uh, the total current should be 4.29. Okay, please, uh, ladies and gents, always just be in the habit of just verifying that with me, right? Um, just check whether that is exactly so. Right, now, uh, in that circuit, they say if the 10 ohm resistor is replaced by a resistor whose power output is 400 ohms, uh, watts rather, okay? It takes 150 seconds to transfer energy uh, of heat to water. Okay, so um, they say calculate uh, the time that the 10 ohm resistor will take to transfer the same amount of heat to the water so first of all let's find out um, for the circuit we know what the power output uh, will be for that circuit right okay um, or rather for for the for the resistors remember they said they replaced the 10 ohm resistor 
okay and they say the power output is therefore uh, 450 watts right and they wanted to know um or they said it takes 150 seconds and we now want to know uh, the time that it will take the 10 ohm resistor all right so what i'm going to do is let me find out how much energy will be dissipated okay during that time so in this case let me find out the total amount of energy that's been dissipated by this resistor the one that replaces okay and then uh, that same energy would be the same amount of energy there but i need to now find out for the scenario where we are using the 10 ohm resistor so what i'm going to simply do is say well i already know the power but what is power power is the rate at which work is done it's energy divided by time or you can say divided by change in time um, so i want the energy okay right and remember uh, the power would be different for the other resistor it would dissipate the same energy but the power uh, it would dissipate it at the same uh, at, at a different rate okay so energy in this case is power multiplied by time okay M multiplied by change in time so in this case uh, my power is 450 watts i'll multiply it by 150 it's already in seconds so i'll say 450 multiplied by 150 and that gives me 67,500 joules of energy okay so that's the amount of energy that i would have dissipated uh, yeah uh, dissipated right but i want to find out the amount of time it will take for the 10 ohm resistor now what would what do i know about the 10 ohm resistor okay i would know first of all what amount of energy is dissipated i know the resistance of the 10 ohm resistor okay and in this case um, um what, what else do we know oh and we want the time isn't it so i would also use so i'm going to use uh, my equation uh, for energy and say well what is energy is going to be uh, work done is vit but remember i'm looking for the energy there to be the energy across that 10 ohm resistor hi uh the mpumalanga examiners um they would need to explain to us why they actually gave four marks for that question because it's quite involving uh, in this case we already have the energy okay the work done we calculated it well we know the resistance is 10 ohms we want the time but do you realize we don't even have the current that passes through the 10 ohm uh, i think in their minds they must have thought ah you'll just use the current that uh, you calculated there but remember that's the total current that's passing through the circuit but you remember when we get to this node that current is going to actually divide okay so you're going to have that current divide across these two resistors here uh, i'm just going to cheat a little bit uh, there is a way to um, that is shorter to calculate the current that passes through those resistors now uh, i'm gonna do this uh, i'm going to just do the following so we know the total current is passing through this one okay I want the current that is passing through the 12 ohm resistor in a sense because it's the current that is passing through both the um, uh, you know the 2 and the 10 ohm resistor there right we said it's the same current so let's call that current I1 okay and let's call the other other current I2 now how you do that quickly and um, um, you would just use this uh, by the way when there's two resistors so i would say the current i1 now please i want you to listen carefully okay i haven't taught this in a while by the way uh, it would be now note i'm looking for the current through the 12 ohm 
but you actually take the resistance of the other resistor, you'd say this would be 6 divided by the sum of the 2, so it would be 6 divided by 6 plus 12, okay, multiplied by the total current, okay? So in this case, this would be uh, a third, and if you think about it, um, this resistance is big, is bigger than 6, right? So more current would actually pass through the 6 and less on the 12. So that is why you'd find that it's actually a third of that. So this would be uh, 6 divided by 18, okay? And multiplied by that total current, which is 4.29, okay? Right, so I get a value of... Uh, 1.43 MPS. So this would be the current that is passing across the 10 ohm resistor. Okay, so I would say, well, the energy dissipated there, that would be that energy there, 67,500, which is equal to what is my current value? Uh, we've just found it, 1.43, but remember this would be squared multiplied by 10 and i'm looking for the time okay and of course all we simply need to do now uh, is take our gymnastics okay so i'm going to say 67,500 divide by 1.43 squared times 10 of course that cancels with that but we do on the left so 1.43 times uh, 10, uh, 1.43 squared rather, uh, times 10, okay? So I'm going to say divided by, okay, 1.43 squared times 10, and I get a value of, okay, uh, 3,000, 3,300 seconds. Whoa. Uh, so I get a time of 3,300 seconds. Okay. Uh, so that would be... All right. You can, you can calculate. They didn't say that we should calculate it uh, in any other way. So 3,300 seconds, of course, you can divide that by 60 to get that in minutes, right? Uh, and that would be the time that it would take. Uh, this is the way that I would tackle it, okay? And and again, um, if anyone can advise me differently uh, to tell me how you could have get, gotten that easier, um, I would more than welcome that. But uh, as far as I'm concerned... We still needed to get the current. Uh, another alternative would have been to find the voltage, but still, uh, I would still do the same thing. I'd have to find the voltage that passes through the 10 ohm resistor. And as a result, uh, you know, I, I, I really do not think that was uh, fair to award four marks for that question. Okay, right, ladies and gents. Um, Right, I hope you uh, um, enjoyed that question and I'll see you guys again next time. Please, and I did say, don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to, to help us grow in that number. All right, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, right, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.